Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. If you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you could stick around a while and hit that red subscribe button. These are two wooden shelves that you're supposed to hang on the wall and then fit some decor into, but I'm not really into that look. But when I see something that's unfinished wood, I know that there's going to be a really good project that I can figure out to do with them. So I've decided to make risers out of both of them. I went to my laser machine and I cut out the specific size that I would need to fit right at the bottom of each of these. And I'm going to use some hot glue to secure them in place. I'm going to use these little wooden egg cups that I sell on my Etsy shop. They're actually meant for sitting a little wooden egg in it, but I think they are perfect for little spindle feet and I use them a lot in my crafts. So I'm going to glue one of them on each of the corners of the large box. I wanted the smaller riser to be a little bit taller, I didn't want them to be the same size. So I usually like to use the Dollar Tree wooden dice. You get three in a pack. I didn't have any on hand. So I'm going into my stash and I find these wooden eggs. And I thought, you know what? This might just work. So I'm gonna glue the bottom part of the egg right into my egg cup. And that's just gonna create a little bit of a taller spindle look. Now I'll glue them on the same way that I did for the larger box, just in the corner. And I like to just line things up in the corner so none of the spindle foot sticks out past the edges of the project. That's just how I like to do it, but you can definitely do whatever you like. I've already decided where I want these two risers to be in my home, so I'm going to paint them or stain them accordingly. So this large one is going into my kitchen dining area where I have a sort of cream and dark brown hutch. So I'm taking some of this gray stain. This is a water-based stain and I got it at my local hardware store and I'm putting it on full strength. In hindsight, I probably would have liked this to be a little bit lighter, but but I still think it turned out amazing. So I'm going to just put the stain on with a regular brush and then I'm gonna grab a paper towel and wipe off the excess. All the products that I'm using in this video and pretty much every video that I have are available on my Amazon store. Even though I've used these little spindle feet in a bunch of projects, I've actually never stained them. So this is a first for me, and I'm thinking that I really like the look of them, especially with this sort of gray stain. It turned out really pretty on them, and it still shows a lot of the wood grain in the spindle itself. For the smaller riser, I painted it with one coat of this gray paint, and it's just a latex paint. I don't even know what color it was. I think it was one of those little samples. And now I'm just going to very gently and not very heavily add some of this crackling medium. I'm going to do it around the corners. I'm going to dribble it down a little bit on the edges. I'm going to add a little bit on the top and the sides, but I don't want this to have a really thick chippy look on. I don't want it to be on the whole piece. So I'm just going to be experimenting with this and putting it where I think it's going to look good, where it would naturally wear and see how it turns out. I used white chalk paint, and this is just a latex paint that I've added some talc to, and I'm going to go over everything just with one stroke. So with Crackle Medium, you have to make sure that you don't go over and over like we normally would if we're painting something. You go over it a few times. That's going to disturb the effect of the crackle. So you want to be very careful and just make sure you have your brush loaded as much as you need it to be and then just go over it once and that's it. 
Crackle is already starting, but I'm just going to grab my hair dryer and give it a little bit of a boost so I can show you what it looks like. And you can actually see the crackle starting to form. And as I said, I didn't put a lot on, so it's going to be very subtle. Here's a look at how they turned out and how I decorated them in my spaces. Now I'd like to share with you this far infrared neck heating wrap that UTK sent me to review. The first thing I noticed is that the fabric is so soft and it's really long. So that means it's going to stay on your neck because you can literally wrap it right around to the front. The section for your neck is filled with tourmaline beads and these emit much more negative ions when they're heating up and the ions promote oxygenation to the brain and then they gently soothe your body. Infrared heat penetrates our skin and the insulating fatty layer and then it inches into the body. It resonates with cells and invigorates them to warm up the target area and ease your pain. The next thing that I thought was really cool about this product is that it actually has its own little charging system. The white piece that you see there is the charging bank. So the first thing you're going to do when you get this product is charge it up with the cable that is included. And once it's charged, you're going to slip it into this little pocket, connect it to the cord that's in there, and then zip it up. The way you turn it on is just to hold the button down for three seconds and it's going to flash red. Then you're going to hit it a couple more times and it's going to go to the first level of heat, which is green. Then you push the button two more times. It switches to blue, which is the medium heat. And then finally the red, which is the high heat. To turn it off, you're going to hold the button down for three seconds. And the really great safety feature is that after 90 minutes of use, it will automatically turn off on its own. So if you do happen to forget to shut it off, it will do that for you. It's super easy to put on. Just make sure that the infrared heating area where the beads are is right at the back of your neck. And then you just simply cross it over in front. Select the heat setting that you'd like to use and you will immediately feel the warmth starting. Remember when we used to use those old heating pads that had a cord and attached you to the wall because then you couldn't move? This is an amazing product because I can move around the house and do all sorts of things. I've been sitting here for a couple of hours editing my video and I've got it on the whole time. It feels absolutely wonderful. I really love the idea of this neck wrap. I love that it's concentrated heat right in the spot where you need it to be, and it fits really well. It's not falling off at all. The other thing is it has the infrared heat and the tourmaline beads, and that is a benefit because those negative ions are going to heat up and they're going to promote oxygen to your brain and to your body. It's completely portable with that power bank, so you can move around your home and do whatever you need to do while still relieving your stiff and sore muscles and the pain associated with it. There will be a link for the Far Infrared Neck Heating Wrap by UTK in my description box, and I'll also have it listed in my Amazon store. Now you may be thinking, why on earth would I buy this ugly orange book? And the reason I did is because the pages are so old and worn and tattered, and it looks amazing from the side. I am painting it. Yes, I am. Now what I should have done, because this is a fabric cover and it's orange, it ended up turning pink. So what I should have done first is put a layer of gray on, which would neutralize the pink color and then put white on top. I did it the opposite way. I ended up painting this one gray and I really loved the color of it and how it turned out that I left it gray. 
I've had some of these Dollar Tree rub-on transfers for a while, and I thought this would be the perfect project to just put some of these along the spine. So I chose the ones that are straight and narrow, and it's really easy to put these on. The spine of this book is pretty flexible. You can see that it's kind of squished in there, but that's okay. I just used my popsicle stick and made sure that I got everything off before I lifted up the cover. Then I cut out the wreath in the center of the page and I added that to the center of the book, which is going to be the top part so it will show. And I really love the tones of the greens with the gray. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And this will be perfect for year round decor. I painted a second book white and I left it that way because it turned out great. And now I'm just going to be adding some stamps to it. I'm going to take this long one and place it at the very bottom. I'm going to add one on the spine and then I'm also going to put something in the center of this book as well on the cover. These turned out so pretty and you know what? They're so inexpensive and they're beautiful to use as risers or you can stand them up. Here's a look at how I styled them. When I'm shopping at the Goodwill, I'm always looking for items that are a different shape. So rather than just getting the regular square tin or the tall canister one, I found this and it was an oval, really purple, bright colors, but definitely I knew I could do something with it. Now it is missing the lid, but I'm going to fix that up in a second. So I'm giving it a couple of coats of parchment chalk paint, and this is just sort of an beigey white color. I think it's really pretty and I love to use this type of color when I'm doing more of a shabby chic look for my projects. I found these two pieces of paper in one of my paper packs and I decided that I'm going to use this to embellish this tin. So I'm first going to just tear off all of the straight edges. I don't want anything to be straight. <laughs> I want this to have more of a rustic kind of shabby look like you know, some of the labels or the paper is already starting to wear off. So I'm going to just start tearing this into strips and making sure that I have all rounded edges. To attach these strips of paper to my tin, I'm going to use Mod Podge, but instead of putting it on the tin, I decided to put it on each of the pieces of paper because I didn't want to add any extra shine to my project. I and this way I can just take it and place it exactly where I want it to be. I do have a little bit of wiggle room if I get it in the wrong spot, but it was just a little bit more control of where the Mod Podge is going to be. I added a similar piece onto the back and then I decided to go all the way around and have these pieces of paper just kind of overlap a little bit and then meet on either side. And this was the initial thought that I had for this project. I thought that might be too much paper on it and it might look a little silly, but I really like how it turned out. It's really unique and it's really pretty. Since the tin didn't have a lid, my trusty laser machine to the rescue, I created two ovals. I measured the inside of the tin. I created one that would fit right inside the tin and another one that was about a quarter of an inch larger. And this way I'm going to be able to put the lid right on the tin. It's going to fit there and it's not going to fall off. I found this wood and metal handle in my stash, so I'm just going to use a really lot of hot glue to glue these two pieces together. And I think the lid really makes it look so much more high end. 
I wanted the lid to be a dark sort of walnut color. So what I did was take my already ready-made stain that I have in this little bottle from the Dollar Tree. The last time I used it, I added too much burnt umber and it turned out kind of on the reddish side. And that was for my little bird cutouts in my last video. So what I did was add a little bit of black and that just darkened it down just enough to give me a beautiful stain. So I'm going to be applying it and then using a paper towel to wipe it off again. I didn't like the contrasting wood color of the handle so I'm taking the same stain and I'm just going to paint it on because literally it is just paint and water. So I'm just going to paint it on, let it dry and I'm going to do the same for the gold handles and it's all going to blend in together beautifully. I have four of these glasses or vases, whatever you want to call them. And my original idea was to create a little set of bud vases and just simply spray paint them a flat white or a gloss white, whatever I happen to have on hand. I changed my mind. I'm taking my little egg cup spindles again, some weld bond glue and some hot glue, and I'm going to glue this to the bottom of two of the glasses. The are similar in shape and I just thought it would look nice to have a set of two. I apologize that I'm off the screen here but now I'm doing the larger one and in just a second I'm going to show you what they look like. When I want to paint shiny or slick surfaces like glass or ceramic, I always take them outside and give them a coat of spray paint. This color is called putty and it's from Krylon and it's a chalk paint. I took some of that mushroom colored chalk paint that I have, which is a beautiful taupe color, and I added some baking soda to it. And now I'm giving each of these little pieces a couple of coats. I'm also going to be doing the spindle as well. I wanted this to look like a stone texture or maybe even a concrete texture, but I get a lot of questions about where I got this color and to be honest it is a house paint. I don't have the recipe for it anymore but I have found some similar colors that I've listed in my Amazon store under the category paint and brushes. So again if you're looking for this and you want to have something similar then head to my Amazon store and check those out. To give these two little vases even more of a stone or a granite look, I took some black paint and I watered it down and now I'm just using my fan brush just to tap on some speckles. I'm going to go all the way around this one and I'm going to do the second one as well. Next, I did the same thing with some white paint and just gave each of them some white speckles too. I didn't care that some of the paint kind of went on a little heavy in some spots. I just think that adds more to the rustic look of it and also more of a natural stone look. I hope you enjoyed this Goodwill challenge where I took some thrifted items and created some beautiful home decor with them in a variety of different styles. If this is the type of content that you would like to see more often from me, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Here's a few more videos that might interest you. Don't forget to do all the things. Subscribe, the notification bell, and the like button. Bye for now.